Japanese militarism Japanese Nihon Kakushugi refers to the ideology in the Empire of Japan which advocates the belief that militarism should dominate the political and social life of the nation, and the belief that the strength of the military is equal to the strength of a nation. Contents, History Rise of Militarism The military had a strong influence on Japanese society from the Meiji Restoration. Almost all leaders in Japanese society during the Meiji period were either former samurai or their descendants and shared a set of values and outlooks. The early Meiji government viewed Japan as threatened by Western imperialism, and one of the prime motivations for the Fukokukiyahai policy was to strengthen Japan's economic and industrial foundations, so that a strong military could be built to defend Japan against outside powers. The Rise of Universal Military Conscription Introduced by Yamagatu Aritumo in 1873, along with the proclamation of the imperial rescript to soldiers and sailors in 1882 enabled the military to indoctrinate thousands of men from various social backgrounds with military patriotic values and the concept of unquestioning loyalty to the emperor as the basis of the Kokutai Yamagata, like many Japanese was strongly influenced by the recent striking success of Prussia in transforming itself from an agricultural state to a leading modern industrial and military power. He accepted Prussian political ideas, which favored military expansion abroad and authoritarian government at home. The Prussian model also devalued the notion of civilian control over the independent military, which meant that in Japan, as in Germany, the military could develop into a state within a state thus exercising greater influence on politics in general. Following the German victory in the Franco-Prussian War the Army Staff College and the Japanese General Staff paid close attention to Major Jacob Meckel's views on the superiority of the German military model over the French system as the reason for German victory. In response to a Japanese request, Prussian Chief of Staff Helmut von Molk sent Meckel to Japan to become an Oyato Gaikokujin foreign advisor. In Japan, Meckel worked closely with future Prime Ministers General Katsura Taro and General Yamagata Aritumo, and with Army Strategist General Kawakami Soroku. Meckel made numerous recommendations which were implemented, including reorganization of the command structure of the Army into divisions and regiments thus increasing mobility, strengthening the army logistics and transportation structure with the major army bases connected by railways, establishing artillery and engineering regiments as independent commands, and revising the universal conscription system to abolish, virtually all exceptions. A bust of Meckel was sighted in front of the Japanese Army Staff College from 1909 through 1945 although his period in Japan 1885-1888 was relatively short Meckel had a tremendous impact on the development of the Japanese military. He is credited with having introduced Clausewitz's military theories and the Prussian concept of war games in a process of refining tactics by training some 60 of the highest-ranking Japanese officers of the time in tactics, strategy and organization. He was able to replace the previous influences of the French advisors with his own philosophies. Meckel especially reinforced Hermann Rosler's ideal of subservience to the emperor, as expressly codified in Articles 1113 of the Meiji Constitution, by teaching that Prussian military success was a consequence of the officer class's unswerving loyalty to their sovereign emperor. The rise of political parties in the late Meiji period was coupled with the rise of secret and semi-secret nationalistic societies, such as the Genia Shaw 1881 and Kokuryukai 1901 which coupled political activities with paramilitary activities and military intelligence, and supported expansionism overseas as a solution to Japan's domestic issues. Japan felt looked down on by Western countries during the late 19th century. The phrase Fukokukiya High Rich Nation Strong Army was created during this time and shows how Japanese officials saw imperialism as the way to gain respect and power. With a more aggressive foreign policy, and victory over China in the First Sino-Japanese War and over Russia in the Russo-Japanese War Japan joined the imperialist powers. The need for a strong military to secure Japan's new overseas empire was strengthened by a sense that only through a strong military would Japan earn the respect of Western nations, and thus revision of the unequal treaties. 
economic factors, during the 19th century, great power status was considered dependent on resource-rich colonial empires, both as a source of raw materials for military and industrial production and international prestige. Due to the lack of resources in Japanese home islands, raw materials such as iron, oil, and coal largely had to be imported. The success of Japan in securing Taiwan 1895 and Korea 1910 had brought Japan primarily agricultural colonies. In terms of resources, the Japanese military looked towards Manchuria's iron and coal, Indochina's rubber and China's vast resources. However, the army was at variance with the Zaibatsu financial and industrial corporations on how to manage economic expansion, a conflict also affecting domestic politics. Independence of the military, also forming part of the basis for the growth of militarism was the freedom from civilian control enjoyed by the Japanese armed forces. In 1878, the Imperial Japanese Army established the Imperial Japanese Army General Staff Office modeled after the German General Staff. This office was independent of, and equal and later superior to the Ministry of War of Japan in terms of authority the Imperial Japanese Navy soon followed with the Imperial Japanese Navy General Staff. These General Staff officers were responsible for the planning and execution of military operations and reported directly to the Emperor. As the chiefs of the General Staff were not cabinet ministers, they did not report to the Prime Minister of Japan and were thus completely independent of any civilian oversight or control. The army and the navy also had decisive say on the formation and survival of any civilian government. Since the law required that the posts of army minister and navy minister be filled by active duty officers nominated by their respective services, and since the law also required that a prime minister resign if he could not fill all of his cabinet posts both the army and the navy had final say on the formation of a cabinet and could bring down the cabinet at any time by withdrawing their minister and refusing to nominate a successor in reality while this tactic was used only one time the threat always loomed large when the military made any demands on the civilian leadership. Expansionism during the Cho period, Japan saw a short period of democratic rule the so-called Cho democracy and several diplomatic attempts were made to encourage peace, such as the Washington Naval Treaty and participation in the League of Nations. However, with the beginning of the Showa era, the apparent collapse of the world economic order with the Great Depression starting in 1929, coupled with the imposition of trade barriers by Western nations and an increasing radicalism in Japanese politics including issues of domestic terrorist violence including an assassination attempt on the emperor in 1932 and a number of attempted coups d'etat by ultranationalist secret societies led to a resurgence of so-called jingoistic patriotism, a weakening of democratic forces and a belief that the military could solve all threats both domestic and foreign. Patriotic education also strengthened the sense of a hakuyakyu, or a divine mission to unify Asia under Japanese rule. Those who continued to resist the military solution including nationalists with unquestionable patriotism, such as Generals Jotaro Watanabe and Tetsuzan Nagato and ex-Foreign Minister Kijuro Shidehara were driven from office or an active role in the government. A turning point came with the ratification of the London Naval Treaty of 1930. Prime Minister Ozaki Hamaguchi and his Minsto party agreed to a treaty which would severely limit Japanese naval power. This treaty was strongly opposed by the military, who claimed that it would endanger national defense, and was portrayed by the opposition Rikansei Yukai party as having been forced upon Japan by a hostile United States, which further inflamed growing anti foreign sentiment. The Japanese system of party government finally met its demise with the May 15 incident in 1932, when a group of junior naval officers and army cadets assassinated Prime Minister Inukaitse Iyashi, although the assassins were put on trial and sentenced to 15 years imprisonment they were seen popularly as having acted out of patriotism and the atmosphere was set where the military was able to act with little restraint. Growth of military adventurism, Japan had been involved in the Asian continent continuously from the First Sino-Japanese War, Boxer Rebellion Russo-Japanese War, World War I and the Siberian Intervention. 
During the term of Prime Minister Tanaka Jitchi from 1927 to 1929, Japan sent troops three times to China to obstruct Chiang Kai-shek's unification campaign. In June 1928, adventurist officers of the Kwantung Army embarked on unauthorized initiatives to protect Japanese interests in Manchuria, including the assassination of a former ally the warlord Jiang Zilin in hopes of sparking a general conflict. The Manchurian incident of September 1931 did not fail and it set the stage for the Japanese military takeover of all of Manchuria. Kwantung Army conspirators blew up a few meters of South Manchurian Railway Company track near Mugd and blamed it on Chinese saboteurs, and used the event as an excuse to invade and seize the vast territory in Tokyo one month later. In the Imperial Colors incident, military figures failed in an attempt to establish a military dictatorship but again the news was suppressed and the military perpetrators were not punished. In January 1932, Japanese forces attacked Shanghai in the first Shanghai incident, waging a three-month undeclared war there before a truce was reached. The civilian government in Tokyo was powerless to prevent these military adventures and instead of being condemned, the Kwangtung Army's actions enjoyed considerable popular support. In Yukai's successors, military men chosen by Seiyanji Kinmoki, the last surviving general, recognized Manchukuo and generally approved the army's actions in securing Manchuria as an industrial base, an area for Japanese emigration, and a potential staging ground for war with the Soviet Union. Various army factions contended for power amid increasing suppression of dissent and more assassinations. And in the February 26 incident of 1936, the army's elite 1st Infantry Division staged an attempted coup d'etat in yet another effort to overthrow civilian rule. The revolt was put down by other military units, and its leaders were executed after secret trials despite public public dismay over these events and the discredit they brought to numerous military figures Japan's civilian leadership capitulated to the army's demands in the hope of ending domestic violence increases were seen in defense budgets, naval construction and patriotic indoctrination as Japan moved toward a wartime footing. In November 1936, the anti kuomintang Pact, an agreement to exchange information and collaborate in preventing communist activities was signed by Japan and Germany, later joined by Italy. War was launched against China with the Marco Polo Bridge incident of July 7, 1937 in which a clash near Beijing between Chinese and Japanese troops quickly escalated into the full-scale warfare of the Second Sino-Japanese War followed by the Soviet-Japanese Border Wars and the Pacific War. Despite the military's long tradition of independence from civilian control its efforts at staging a coup d'etat to overthrow the civilian government and its forcing Japan into war through insubordination and military adventurism the military was ultimately unable to force a military dictatorship on Japan. Under Prime Minister Kono Fumamaro the Japanese government was streamlined to meet wartime conditions and under the national mobilization law was given absolute power over the nation's assets. In 1940 all political parties were ordered to dissolve into the Imperial Rule Assistance Association forming a one-party state based on totalitarian values. Even so there was much entrenched opposition from the government bureaucrats and in the 1942 general election for the Japanese Diet the military was still unable to do away with the last vestiges of party politics. This was partly due to the fact that the military itself was not a monolithic structure but was rent internally with its own political factions. Japan's overseas possessions, greatly extended as a result of early successes in the Pacific War were organized into a Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere, which was to have integrated Asia politically and economically under Japanese leadership against Western domination. Militarism was even reflected in the clothing trends of the 1930s male kimono designs adopted explicitly militaristic imagery including soldiers bombers and tanks these designs were not on public display but on linings and undergarments. They symbolized or in the case of boys clothes were hoped to bring about the alignment of the individual's goals with those of Japan as a whole. Opposition to militarism despite the apparently monolithic national consensus on the official aggressive policies pursued by the imperial government in the first part of the Showa era, some substantial opposition did exist. This was one of various forms of Japanese dissidents during the Showa period.
The most organized open opposition to militarism was from the Japanese Communist Party in the early 1930s. Communist activists attempted to influence army conscripts but the party was suppressed during the mid-1930s. Attack on Pearl Harbor Main article Attack on Pearl Harbor The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor December 7, 1941 was preceded by a multitude of events leading up to it such as the Japanese people's opposition to Westernism and the breaking off of negotiations between Japan and the United States. Japan had plans to take over other Asian countries which resulted in the U.S. to strip any war materials and resources to be sold to the Japanese and froze all assets and bank accounts in the U.S and the U.S. fleet moved from being stationed in California to be moved in Pearl Harbor to somewhat control Japan's aggression and imposed on an embargo of essential materials on account of plans to take over and control more territories. Post-war edit. Despite efforts to totally militarize Japanese society during the war, including such measures as the National Service Draft Ordinance and the National Spiritual Mobilization Movement Japanese militarism was discredited by the failure of Japan's military in World War II and by the American occupation after the surrender of Japan many of its former military leaders were tried for war crimes before the Tokyo Tribunal furthermore its government and educational system were revised and pacifism was written into the post-war constitution of Japan as one of its key tenets Timeline